Hey everyone, in this video I'm on board the Norwegian Bliss and I'm going to give you a tour of this incredible ship. Let's go! The Norwegian Bliss is one of the larger ships in the Norwegian fleet, part of the Breakaway Plus class. This ship was built in 2018, weighs over 168,000 tons, is 333 meters long, and can accommodate over 4,000 guests. You can check out my full boarding experience and our balcony cabin tour videos linked in the description below. We had an amazing week exploring all of the amenities and attractions on board the ship. So without further ado, let's jump right into the tour. Starting on deck five. This is where you'll find the kids club starting with the guppies open play. This is for infants six months to three years old for parents to bring and play with their little cruisers. You'll also find the Splash Academy where kids aged 3 to 12 can be signed up by their parents to enjoy activities supervised by the cruise youth staff. Just down the hall is the arcade, and there were many popular games to choose from here, and prices weren't too high for a cruise ship. If you wanted to purchase arcade credits, you could do that in the casino on Deck 7. And lastly, there is Entourage Teen Club. This is a teen only club and absolutely no parents are allowed, so I didn't dare open the door. Now on to deck six. Starting at the bow of the ship, you will find the Bliss Theater. This is where you'll find incredible performances throughout the week, including musicals six and the Jersey Boys. Definitely make your reservations early to get a seat. The Q Texas Smokehouse is one of the specialty dining options on the ship specializing in barbecue and is decorated to look like you're in a western. We ate there on our first night on board and we'll be sharing more about the food in an upcoming video so stay tuned for that. And just down the hall is the library and card room. It was pretty busy inside so I just peeked in but there were games you could play and lots of books to borrow as well. From there you can find the atrium. This is where you'll find guest services, cruise necks, the excursion desk, and the atrium bar. This is also where they host a lot of activities and entertainment throughout the day and evening, and there is plenty of comfortable seating here as well. It's open to the deck above, so if you're up in the local, you can peek down and see what's going on. In this area, you'll also find the Starbucks, and just note, Starbucks isn't included unless you have the Premium Plus beverage package, but you can pay as you go. Midship you'll find the Social Comedy and Nightclub. We didn't watch any shows here, but we did attend the Silent Disco which we thought was pretty fun and I highly recommend it. Across the ship is Coco's, an a la carte dessert bar. They have assorted chocolates, desserts, and ice cream to name a few. We went back when it was open, but I forgot to record our experience. Next up is the Teppanyaki restaurant. This is another specialty dining option that does cost extra, and you sit around a shared table and watch your chef prepare your meal, so it's like dinner and a show. The collection art gallery is a long hallway leading you toward the back of the ship. This collection is all for sale throughout the week on board, and they host a few art auctions on sea days as well. And toward the aft of the ship, you will find the Mix Bar along with Savor and Taste, two of the main dining rooms where you can have sit-down breakfasts and dinners. And if you head outside to the open decks, you will be able to see some of the lifeboats and catch a glimpse of the water. Smoking is only permitted in designated areas outside. Now on to Deck 7. Starting again near the bow of the ship, we have the local pub and grill. This restaurant is complimentary and offers a wide variety of classic pub fare. You can eat in the dining area or the pub area, plus there are seats overlooking the atrium below. The local is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and is also open late if you're looking for a late night snack.
Just down the hall is a small arcade and bowling alley as well. All of these games are pay as you go, similar to the arcade. Next up is the Bliss Casino. The casino is shut down while you're in port but is a lively place when the ship is at sea. There are lots of slot machines and there are also classic casino games including blackjack, craps, and more. And the casino is in the center of Ocean Place 678, which is where all three floors, 6, 7, and 8, open for access to some of the most popular attractions on board and the massive chandelier. In this area, you will also find the Skyline Bar, which is the casino bar. Here you'll find seating, a stage, and a dance floor for evening entertainment. And finally, at the aft of the ship, you will find the Manhattan Room. This is one of the main dining rooms, open for dinner, and is complimentary as well. We really enjoyed our dinners here. You can make reservations or take your chances and walk up like we did. Now to deck number eight. Starting at the back of the ship, we have another bar, the A-List Bar. This is a popular spot for passengers waiting to have dinner at one of the two specialty dining options here and is open in the evenings. Kegney Steakhouse is one of the two specialty dining restaurants that has delicious meat and seafood options on the menu. We dined here and absolutely loved our meals. This is one of the most popular specialty restaurants, so make sure to reserve in advance to get a good dining time. Then across the way is Los Lobos, another specialty dining option and a premium Mexican restaurant with a modern twist. We also made dinner reservations here and had a fantastic meal, but like I said, tune into my dining video coming up to hear all the details. The Bliss also has the Bake Shop, which offers various baked treats and desserts. It's not included in your cruise fare, but prices aren't too bad. Sadly, we never timed our visit right, so it was always closed when we went by. Just past the elevators on Deck 8 is where you'll find all of the shopping. Here you can find Tradewinds Boutique shopping, and there are many tax and duty-free items here like skincare, alcohol, and more. Plus, there's tons of jewelry and watches. So if you want to purchase anything for yourself or someone back home, this might be the place for you. Just outside of the Tradewinds was a spot where they had different merchandise out each day, and there were deals like t-shirts for $10 and other random items that would make great souvenirs. Across from there was Sandbar, which is another souvenir and alcohol shop. You can purchase clothing, snacks, cigarettes, tote bags, Norwegian merchandise, and some other personal hygiene essentials as well. And then there is the photo gallery. Here you can purchase various camera equipment as well as your photo packages and check out pictures of you taken by the cruise staff throughout the cruise. Midship on Deck 8 is where you'll find the Sugarcane Mojito Bar. Here they had a great menu of mojitos, but you could also get other cocktails, wines, beers, and liquor as well. There was comfortable seating and a little area where they had performers and did a mojito class on sea days. Next up is Malting's Whiskey Bar. Here you'll find an array of whiskies and bourbons along with other international spirits, some wine, and beer too. The decor is classic with a lot of leather seating and dim lighting, so it definitely added to the atmosphere. They also do bourbon and whiskey tastings on sea days. And just beside Maltings was the Humidor Cigar Lounge. To get access, you have to go out to the open deck and go in from the outside. And if you're not a smoker, it's definitely a smelly area. You can kind of smell the smoke when you're sitting close to the room as well. So a friendly note, avoid it if you're sensitive to smoke. While you're outside, you will also see the Cavern Club Outdoor Bar. This was our favorite bar on the ship and we love the outdoor seating. They had the generic drink menu here with plenty of variety and options. Inside was the Cavern Club. There was plenty of seating in here with tables and there was also an indoor bar. 
The Cavern Club hosted a variety of live musical performers in the evenings and was also a spot for karaoke. The Cellars was located across from the Cavern Club and was a beautiful wine cellar featuring various wines. The sommelier here was extremely knowledgeable, friendly, and made it a great experience. We even did one of the wine tastings, the wine and cheese pairing, and there were other tasting events on sea days as well, so definitely check those out. Behind the wine cellar was La Cucina, the Italian specialty dining restaurant. We also dined here and I had a fantastic dinner, though Alan didn't make the best choices and he wasn't a fan of his food. Moving toward the front of the ship, you will find the District Brew House, a craft brewery with tons of beer selection on tap and also in the bottle. If you like craft breweries, then this would be the place for you. We really enjoyed it here and thought the evening entertainment was pretty great. On the other side of the ship was another specialty dining option, Food Republic. This is where you could get fusion foods from cultures across the globe like sushi, Thai, or even street food. On deck 9 to 14, you'll find staterooms that range from studio, inside cabins, balcony cabins, all the way to Haven class staterooms. Now it's time for deck 15. On this deck, you'll find the observation lounge. This is a beautiful area at the front of the ship where you can get some amazing views while cruising and while in port. There's a lot of seating, a small buffet area with snacks, and a full service bar. Deck 15 also has staterooms ranging from inside cabins to Haven class cabins. Now on to Deck 16. Starting at the front of the ship is the Garden Cafe. This is the main buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The buffet has hand washing stations at the entrances and crew members also spray hand sanitizer when you go in. The buffet is back to being self-serve and each day they have a different theme for dinner, like prime rib night, Mexican, and even seafood night. We actually didn't eat dinner at the buffet, but we did have a few breakfasts and lunches here throughout the week. The food we did have there was all pretty good and there were no complaints from me. Deck 16 is also the pool deck and this is where you'll find the main pool and tons of sun chairs. Though on a sea day, good luck getting a chair near the pool or in the sun. You have to get there early. There are two bars here, the surf bar in one corner and the waves bar in the other corner. Both serve the same standard bar menu with a wide variety of drink options. At night, the pool deck is all lit up and set up for movies under the stars. While we were there, they were playing Doctor Strange and they had movies each night but bring a towel or a blanket because it gets quite chilly up there. Deck 16 also has a kids aqua park and there are quite a few big water slides in the area here as well. And if you're looking for an activity to do in the shade, this deck also has table tennis available on a first come first serve basis. The ship also has a full service salon and spa. Here you can get pampered with different spa treatments, experience the salt room, or even venture into the snow room. And if you need a manicure, pedicure, or hair service, they have you covered here too. And just across the hall is the Pulse Fitness Center. This gym offers all the amenities of a regular gym at home with cardio equipment, weights, a bike room for spin classes, and they also offer yoga classes, Pilates, and more. Now let's look at deck 17. This is where you'll find Spice H2O. This is an adults only area of the ship. There are pool chairs, two hot tubs, and a water feature to cool down. There is also a full service bar, some shaded seating, and around the other side of the bar is a smoking section. It's a nice peaceful area of the ship.
At the entrance of Spice H2O, you will also find one of the entrances to the American Diner. This is an a la carte restaurant and offers traditional American fare like lobster rolls, crispy chicken, and burgers. It's even decorated like a retro diner and has great views of the ocean with a full row of ocean view seating. On this deck, you will also find Le Bistro, the French specialty dining restaurant. It has an elegant atmosphere and a menu to match with traditional French cuisine like escargot and some classic chicken and seafood dishes. The jogging track is also located on deck 17, but if you want to use it to do laps, do so in the morning or evening because during the day it turns into a seating area and chairs get arranged along the balcony for passengers to enjoy the sun and ocean views. This deck is also where you will find some more of the Haven State rooms including the villa and penthouse balcony rooms. And now deck 18. More of the Haven amenities can be found on this deck, including the Haven restaurant exclusively for guests staying in the Haven category cabins. This deck is also where you will find access to the Bliss Speedway. Yes, they even have go-karts at sea. Be sure to check out the times in advance if you want to take advantage of this track. It costs $15 per person per ride. The track goes up to deck 19 as well, and you can get great views up there of the drivers going around the hairpin turns at up to 20 miles per hour. And while we're talking about deck 19, another attraction or activity on this deck is mini golf, and this activity is included. It's a first come, first served activity, and the putters and balls are in a stand at the beginning of the course. It's only a five hole course, so it doesn't take too long to play. And at the front of the ship on deck 19 is where you'll find the sun deck. Here you'll find more pool chairs for seating, a hot tub, and a full service bar. But if you're 18 or over and looking for an even more relaxing day at sea, you can purchase passes at guest services to enjoy the Vibe Beach Club. Here you'll find luxurious chaise loungers and a hot tub. On the other side is the Haven Courtyard Sun Deck, but since we weren't Haven guests, we didn't have access, so I couldn't record there. And last but not least is Deck 20. On this deck, you'll find the Laser Tag Course. This activity also has an extra charge of $9.95 per person per game. They have quite a list of rules if you want to play this though, so make sure you check that out in advance before you get there so that you can go prepared. Another important thing to note is that there are public restrooms on each deck and most were accessible or the deck had accessible specific restrooms. And there you have a full tour of the ship. Coming soon will be a food tour and what we got up to in each of the ports, so stay tuned for those. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing around the Norwegian Bliss. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more travel videos coming soon.